Hey, we are here at Sun and Fun, and we've got a lot of fun air show stuff to cover, plus some important things, including the future of unleaded aviation fuel. That's right, we've also got fly-ins, the Super Patriot, and the Stoll demo. having a great time. I am Nikki Britton. And my friends are reintroduction. I'm Sierra Harrop. And Nikki, we are at Sun and Fun 2022. It's your first time at Sun it and Fun. It is my first time at Sun and Fun and I am having a great time. The air show is fantastic as well as the night air show. Yeah, all both things are fantastic. I got a chance to actually watch the air show from the catwalk of the tower. Check out this video. This is actually a pretty unique perspective. I've never seen anything like it. It kind of puts the show in full perspective. And that night air show, you got to watch it last night. What was that like? Oh my gosh, it was super cool. The lights, the sounds, oh, it was just amazing. Everybody was having a great time. Yeah, and it's uh, not quite as hot in the evening, oh. so you can probably enjoy it a little bit more. And it, we'd be remiss if we didn't report on the controversy here. The Amish Donut Company is missing this year. Peachy family that owns it, please come back next year. That's come the only back. bad thing we can say is there's no Amish donuts. But we're getting to meet all our friends. I know, new friends, old friends, people that I have met online that I get to see here for the first time. It's really exciting. A lot of folks are coming in for the first time after the pandemic, getting back together. Air shows are back, sun and fun is back, and we're having a fantastic time. And hey, the Sweeps Tiger is right behind us on display. Ooh, looking good too. It is so nice. The Sweeps Tiger is finally finished and it is sitting pretty here at the AOPA tent. And here's more. We're here at Sun and Fun 2022 with the AOPA Sweepstakes Grumman Tiger. And as you can see, it's finally finished. We can't wait to show you around and can't wait in two months to give it away to a lucky pilot. Let's take a look at what we've done. First off, we put in a factory rebuilt engine, courtesy of Air Power, 180 horsepower line coming 0360. We have an electro air electronic ignition, air forms air baffle, and flying it is this beautiful MT three blade, electronically controlled constant speed propeller. It's a real performer. So when you slide the canopy back, you'll first notice this beautiful custom interior fashioned by Roberto's Aircraft Interiors in Smoketown, Pennsylvania, and it is beautiful. A, a multi-tone leather seat with blue inserts and blue carpeting, pretty rare. And then, after you sit down, you will definitely notice this glass cockpit full of Garmin Avionics, G3X 10-inch and 7-inch touch displays. It was installed by JA Air Center in Aurora, Illinois, and they also custom cut this panel. It is absolutely beautiful and flies amazingly. When the Tiger was donated by AOPA members, Daryl and Shelley Lippman, it did not have wheel pants. So we thought that that was super important and we had wheel pants donated by Fletch Air. We really appreciate that. It flies a few knots faster with the wheel pants. And then to finish it all off, we have this beautiful new paint scheme from Scheme Designers, painted by Lancaster Arrow, also in Smoketown, Pennsylvania. It looks absolutely beautiful and it really finishes the airplane perfectly. You won't see another Grumman Tiger like this anywhere else in the world. And up until May 20th, you can enter to possibly win this airplane. All AOPA members are automatically entered and you can also enter by going to aopa.org sweeps. A few weeks later, we're gonna be surprising a lucky pilot at their home airport I hope it's you. And that's not all. A historic first. The AOPA Sweepstakes Grumman Tiger will be the first certified airplane with two electronic ignitions. That means no more magnetos. The president of Electro Air stopped by to drop it off with the good news. One of the questions that I'm asked most often is why did we choose Electro Air for the electronic ignition on the AOPA Sweepstakes Grumman Tiger? Well, one of the reasons, and we didn't really talk about this much, but we were told by Electro Air that there was a possibility sometime before we gave away the sweepstakes, they might be able to get certification for an STC for dual electronic ignition on this Tiger. And that's something that we could just not pass up. I'm happy to say that Mike Kobalik, 
president of Electro Air stopped by our Sun and Fun booth today, and he has the STC and the very first dual electronic ignition kit for our O360 engine in our Grumman Tiger. Mike, congratulations on the certification, and thank you so much for putting the first kit on our Grumman Tiger. Colin, thank you so much. And thank you so much for letting Electro Air be a supporter of the Grumman Tiger sweepstakes giveaway airplane and of AOPA. This has been a, a great partnership for a number of years now. We've been on a number of your airplanes, and it's, uh, it's a great benefit to us to partner with you. Well, we appreciate the partnership, and for the last year or so, we've been flying the airplane with one magneto and one electronic ignition. And yeah, other than some wiring for the electronic ignition and a different uh, switch panel that replaced the keyed switch panel and the magnetos, um, there's more that needs to be done when you do the electron, the dual electronic ignition. So I was hoping that you could talk us through what are the components that we'll need to add to the Tiger? Yeah, absolutely. First things first, you need a second electronic ignition kit. And in the case of the Tiger, it's identical to what we had supplied to AOPA previously. The second thing that'll happen is the switch panel that Colin mentioned will now change, essentially look the same way but instead of saying Magneto or Mag on one side, EIS on the other, it'll be EIS-1, EIS-2. And again, control it the way airplanes are meant to be controlled, in my opinion, with rocker switches and a push-button start. The other piece of the puzzle, and this was the, the part that we worked on really hard with the FAA over the last year, is in order to do dual electronic ignition systems, there had to be some sort of backup power provided to one of the electronic ignition systems. We ended up partnering with a company called TCW out of, out of Pennsylvania. They manufacture a very lightweight lithium iron backup battery. This particular one is a 12 volt, three amp hour backup battery. It'll drive one of the electronic ignition systems for almost two and a half hours. The FAA requirement for the backup battery was that it drive one of the ignition systems for at least 60 minutes. The other piece that had to come along with it that was part of the requirement is that when you put the backup battery in, you have to have some means of controlling it. So we have the switch here that'll, that'll allow us to take the backup battery out of the system, or just prior to flight, we put it into the ready position so we've essentially readied the battery. So this gives us full control of the backup battery system, and then automatically when it does come on, we get an amber light coming on to let us know that we're now running the electronic ignition system on the, on the backup battery. Time to start thinking about what else is going on electrically. Fantastic. So when we take out the magneto and we put in the second electronic ignition system, what kind of uh, efficiency or performance changes can we expect? You know, with our system, we don't, with the second ignition system, expect much more performance gains. You might see, depending on how high you want to take the Tiger, better performance at some altitudes above 12,000 feet, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest gains and biggest advantages of going to a second dual electronic ignition system is you eliminate the magneto maintenance. There are no 500 hour requirements on the electronic ignition system. The only component that's really got a life limit to it is the mag timing housing, and this goes 2,500 hours. So essentially the life of the engine. That's, right. that's one of the main advantages. Okay, so you heard it here first. We took out all of the analog gauges. We replaced them with all digital gauges. And at that point in time, we got rid of the vacuum pump. Now we're getting rid of all the magnetos, dual electronic ignition. Thank you so much. Colin, thank you. Now this has been in the works for years. We'll have more on that dual electro air system coming up. You can read a lot more about the AOPA sweepstakes Grumman Tiger in AOPA Pilot Magazine. And the AOPA Extra 300L is here and it is looking gorgeous with some new decals. Generously donated by Bruce Williams to AOPA, it has some new Garmin avionics courtesy install of, from Southeast Aero and we're very happy about that, so thank you. It will be used by AOPA's Air Safety Institute for upset recovery training. 
Unleaded Avgas is a big topic here at the show. It's front of mind for many pilots and Sun and Fun President and CEO John Light's Lean House, AOPA President and CEO Mark Baker and Gamma President Pete Bunce along with EAA President Jack Pelton gathered to talk about the situation. Now it's not a matter of if 100 low lead will be killed off, but when and we have to be ready for it. The industry is still working towards a 100 low lead drop-in solution and as an industry we are committed to finding a solution no later than 2030. The thing that I'm most concerned about today is keeping the low lead available until we find the solution. And you know, we've got a number of reports that have taken an initiative in California, Northern California, now Southern California, that are eliminating the distribution of low lead at their airports. And I consider that to be a huge safety issue because if we know that if you put a 94 or a low lead, no lead fuel in a high compression engine, let's call it over 200 some horsepower, 520s, 550s, 540s, uh, you have a very high likelihood of detonation. So this is a huge safety issue today. And we're trying to enlist the, hope, the help of the DOT and the FAA and their legal group to say you can't make that decision right now. Now the Avgas issue is very complex. It has a lot of moving parts. We have a website where you can check out the latest on it. It's aopa.org slash 100 UL. And George Brawley, chief engineer of General Aviation Modifications Incorporated, or GAMI, called on the FAA to issue his company a supplemental type certificate to allow his 100 octane unleaded fuel to be used in essentially every spark ignition engine and every airframe powered by those engines. Brawley says he has completed every test required for the approval, has sign off from various levels of the FAA, and was advised on March 3rd by the FAA Wichita Aircraft Certification Office, or ACO, that the fuel was ready for approval. GAMI has completed all underlined all necessary showings and findings of compliance and provided type design data and documentation required for the substantiation of the requested uh, expansion of the engine STC with that number. Not most of or nearly all of but all. Brawley has been working on the fuel for years. You can read much more about this on our website. AOPA's Air Safety Institute has announced its VFR into IMC campaign. Among the top five causes of fatal GA accidents, VFR into IMC is a top priority for ASI in 2022. The reason we chose this as our focus area for 2022 is because in the last NAL report, which was 2019 data, we had 18 uh, fatal accidents from VFR into IMC. And then if you add the other accidents and the ASRS reports to that where pilots are getting into difficult situations, we're getting into VFR and IMC situations more than twice a month. And with all the data that we have available to us, with satellite weather, with the improvement of forecasting, it doesn't make sense to me. We should be reducing those numbers more dramatically. And that's what we want to see in 2022. AOPA's VFR into IMC Safety Spotlight is on our website. It includes videos, podcasts, articles, and webinars, and the center will be updated throughout the year as more materials and events become available. Sun and Fun is just the first of many aviation events this year, and AOPA is going to be hosting three of them. The Aviator Showcase at the Fort Worth Alliance Airport in Texas is going to take place on June 16th and 17th, and it's basically a shopping event for aircraft owners and prospective owners. Fly-ins are back after the COVID hiatus and everybody is so excited for them. And this year, we're calling them Hangouts. We are taking our normal AOPA fly-ins and we're bringing them back to the grassroots. Very casual, think fire pits, think sitting around the fire, having a drink. Uh, we've expanded our 3-9 lounge. That's gonna be the center hub of all of our activities. Food trucks, bars, again, fire pits. Um, we'll have stole demos. We'll also have interactive time with the STOL pilots so we can find out what it takes to be a STOL pilot. Outdoor exhibits, outdoor seminars, um, everything the old ALPA fly-ins had, but just on a much more casual basis. The first hangout this year is going to be in Spokane, Washington, September 9th and 10th. And our second one is going to be at the Tampa Executive Airport in Florida, November 5th and 6th. And, you know, the best part about aviation, of course, is the community. And there's lots of different ways to build community. Here at Sun and Fun is one. But people are obviously connecting online as well. And one of the platforms that younger pilots are using is called TikTok. If you're not familiar with it, it's vertical videos, kind of short format, and people kind of sharing what's going on in their world. Well, I ran into one of my TikTok friends here. His name's Theo Matlin, a.k.a. Captain Matlin, on TikTok. He has recently purchased his own 
Piper Cherokee 140 and documented the process. But the cool thing is, is he's 23 years old, so he's documenting that process on TikTok for other Gen Z pilots to see that ownership is accessible to them too. I got some exciting news. Um, Miguel and I found a plane. Otherwise signed and we're setting up a pre-buy right now. Something I've always wanted to do my entire life is buy an airplane. And so, of course, when you first look at it, you go big and I'm like, oh, these new Cirruses look beautiful and all these things, but that's not what you can do, right? Yesterday when I did the video, I purposely left out one thing and that's the plane I'm going to get. Um, I can tell you now it's going to be a Cherokee 140, late 60s. There's going to be one picture, a little hint of it. Um, and the next thing you'll probably see about this plane is uh, finishing up the pre-buy. I ended up talking to people actually on TikTok and asking them a lot of their personal experiences with planes and I settled on the Cherokee 140. This blue and white beauty named Juliet is Theo's pride and joy. He's already upgrading the panel and working to make it a perfect time building machine to help him get to the airlines. But he's documenting the whole process and experience on TikTok, popular with Gen Z, for other young pilots to get a realistic look at aircraft ownership. I'm going to be driving to uh the pre -buy. so let's take you on this trip. I think there is a lack of knowledge for young people in aviation right now. I think a lot of people believe that owning an aircraft or even flying is out of reach. And kind of rewind the clocks a little bit, when I was in high school and I started flying at 14, I got three friends from my high school to start flying. And I realized that the only thing holding people back from doing it is really knowing about it and learning about the process. It's not that unattainable. And with a great series of videos demystifying everything from the pre-buy inspection to the ADSB solution, Theo's TikTok is far more than hamburger runs. But as he uses this airplane to prepare for his career, he says he'll never lose his passion for general aviation. The goal is airline, but I don't think I can ever sell her. Uh, there's a special place in my heart for general aviation. I've been flying since I was 14, worked as a lineman for four or five years at a flight club. Um, I can never leave it behind. The future is bright. The kids are definitely all right. I am so thrilled to see these young people doing such amazing things in aviation already. You can follow Theo on TikTok. His handle's at Captain Matlin, and I'm at Sierra Harrop, and... And I'm at Nikki the Pilot. You gotta post more, though, girl. I know. I'm still very <laughs> new to TikTok, but I am working on it. Well, we'll see you there if uh, you're on there. We'd love to have you join us, and AOPA's also on there as well. Well, coming up after the break, We'll have some awesome new airplanes to tell you about. And the Stoll demo. Awesome. Looks cool. We'll see you in a second. I'm Claudius Klimt. Uh, I've got 3,200 uh, hours in the air in uh, general aviation aircraft. Uh, I've got a single engine land, single engine C rating, a multi-engine land, um, uh, tailwheel endorsement, instruments, and uh, gyroplane commercial. I am currently in a partnership in the Bristol 354 Bravo. Flying is totally rejuvenating. There's nothing else I can think about when I'm flying except flying. My wife calls it an altitude adjustment. I come home happy. I mostly use Sirius XM weather. Man, does it give peace of mind. Without that knowledge, it gets to be sort of anxiety producing. That's not really a whole lot of fun. Welcome back. Good news for Bonanza fans. Textron has announced updates to the new G36 Bonanza. It includes a 155 pound increase in maximum takeoff weight, interior updates, new paint schemes. And all new production Beechcraft and Cessna piston models will include a Garmin GI275 electronic standby. And in the turbine end of the single engine spectrum, Dyer unveiled the new TBM 960. It's the most sophisticated TBM yet. It has a new engine, a Pratt & Whitney PT6E-66 XT. Now that's a mouthful. It allows more power at higher cruise altitudes. It's got a new five blade composite Hartzell Raptor propeller. Of course, FADEC controls for the engine. Single power lever. Dyer calls it an e-throttle. It controls the engine and propeller. And the new system automates the start sequence. TBM's home safe Autoland system is another standard feature and it's got more comfort features for passengers, including redesigned seats, a new window dimming and environmental control system. Now the TBM 960 replaces the TBM 940. And if you have to ask, 
the price, a cool $4.8 million. Stole competitions are taking the aviation world by storm and people are loving it. The Husky National Stole Series taking place at Sun and Fun Paradise City Field is so cool and hundreds of people come out to watch it. There's also a new aircraft competing this year in the Stole competition and that is the Super Patriot. Uh, AOPA Live's Josh Cochran has more. It ain't your daddy's super cub. But it does bear a resemblance. There are a lot of cub clones out there. For this all new experimental model, Patriot Aircraft took an extra careful look at the details and the pilot experience. It's our baby that we've been working on for about two years now. It's been a kind of a top secret project. We felt the need for an airplane that had a light wing loading, was, uh, had the creature com comforts for the pilot, very good flying airplane and also something that a mechanic could work on. That was important to us, those three major things when we designed this airplane. There are just so many details to this airplane. You really have to come see it. I mean, everything from the door handle system that latches and holds the windows, the seats adjustments, the way you could get in and out of the airplane because it's got a bigger door, the ergonomics of the dash, the, it's kind of like when you step into a fighter pilot and you look at it, the panel comes in at an angle, so it's not your usual flat panel, kind of, you know, it, it has a really nice look to it. Everything is at you when you're a pilot. You got the fuel selector valve that looks at you, you know, so it's not something that you really got to fumble with and worry about. It's just the ergonomics of it. Everything feels good, and because we've got the wing loading light on the airplane, it really feels like an early Super Cub. The airplane has a Lycoming IO320 engine and a ground adjustable Sensenik prop. And the reason we did it is we wanted, again, a lighter airplane. So we went with the 320. It's got the airflow performance fuel injection system. It's got a cold air sump. It's got EMAGs on it. And the combination is just, just outstanding. Cameron Simmons flew the Super Patriot in the Stoll competition at Sun and Fun. You can either go 110 mile an hour or you can go 30 mile an hour. And that's the great thing about this airplane. It's not just a purpose-built purpose, purpose -built airplane for stall competitions and whatnot. This thing does it all. It's robust. It's very utilitarian, um, and, and I like it. The first Super Patriot will be delivered on August 1st. Josh Cochran, AOPA Live. The Super Patriot costs between $280,000 and $380,000. That looks like a beast. Yes, and it is so cool looking, and everybody that has seen it loves it. I can imagine so. It's, uh, you know, that whole sector of aviation's really been growing, and it's nice to see another entrant uh, in that uh, marketplace. So. Especially somebody so young, and he is yeah. killing it. Yeah, no, that's great. Well, hey, we actually have to get inside pretty quick because sun and fun, and apparently today some rain, mm -hmm. But uh, we have had a blast hanging out here this week. We'll have a ton of more content that uh, we'll bring you here in the, the weeks to come. Absolutely. But before we go, what has been your favorite thing so far? Gosh, I think it's just meeting the people and seeing all of the new airplanes. I just absolutely love being a part of this community. Everybody is so cool. The camaraderie is amazing. Yeah, people are definitely the best part of aviation. For me, I think my favorite thing was flying in. This is I've been in aviation for 10 years, and I've actually never flown myself as PIC into a major air show before. I flew AOPA's RV-12 down here from Maryland. That was a real treat. I came in a day before the Lake Parker arrival, though. I, I kind of bummed I didn't get to land on a dot, but uh, I'm happy to be here, and we're having a, a, just a blast with everybody. And uh, yeah, well, there's oh, the there's thunder. The there's thunder. our cue. Time for us to get out of here, but we will see you next week. Thank you for joining us. There are many important things to consider before purchasing an aircraft. Let the experts at Aerospace Reports help guide you through the process. We combine expert knowledge with our long-standing commitment to personalized customer service to perfect your transaction. Learn more at aerospacereports.com.